what we are talking about in this uh, AI. That's it. That's the same thing. When we grow up, over a period of time, we remember. Uh, we have seen these movies, Hollywood movies. Someone has hacked it, something has happened. Then suddenly we realize that that fear has come right away in India. Right now, it's like earlier on, the whole system was very manual. We had manual systems, paper and pen. And rightly said, General Kuchar mentioned it. It's a military situation, and it's an everyday military situation. And that's all we are dealing with. And put another perspective with uh, the data. Any data stored in government, with the government, is sensitive. Even if it's a fingerprint, it's your property detail or anything. You can imagine somebody takes your property detail and changes the name and all earned money for so many years. Maybe your lifetime opportunity, it changes. And when this data is changed, for example, your property name is changed, what is your redressing mechanism? You have to fight out a court case. Probably that is that takes more time than anything. So that's why any data which is stored in a government is sensitive. So you you talk about how do we give access to this data? We have things like we we want people to be IT savvy. We want our patwari to carry it in mobile devices. But maybe our patwari wouldn't understand what is the uh, you know the effect of it. Maybe wouldn't <coughs> really know what's the picture here. Probably was mentioning, Arbo was mentioning. Why would you actually do an internet banking if you are not very sure what is happening there? It's the trust, and the government is interested with the bigger trust. अभी कुछ भी इतना भी होता है, at the end of the day you rely on government. We we throw big bags on government, but at the end of the day the only person who is going to stand by you is the government. And that's what the data which is stored in government is very sensitive, and we have to analyze the mechanism, the the, the access to the uh, uh, data. Like the, 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 you mentioned, this state data center, which is the backbone of the IT data, which is stored with the government, has to be secure. He was talking about the perimeter breach. The, the government data is stored in SDC. We have some mechanisms. The mechanisms is that you do a security auditing, then you get your data on it. But there has to be drills over a period of time to find out whether it has happened or not. We cannot actually respond after an event has happened. By then it's a chaos. Think of it. I go to a place, change ten, a hundred names in a registered document. You have a political situation there. There will be dharna sitting there. I remember there was an event. We had a breakdown of of the state data center for period of say one hour. Our commercial tax data is entered into our SDC. And you know the result. The result was there was queues of hundred kilometers. The challenges for the transport vehicles were not happening. So this is where you bring in how important is your response to a disaster. And think of it: if you are not able to do this, it's a government service. You can't rent that vehicle to pass through your toll gate without a challan, and you have to do it. That's how your the systems becomes important. And with government, everything is important. <coughs> so this is what we are thinking at as uh, General Kochar Minister: the difference between the mobile. And the ideas reduced. It's more or less the same thing. And these are the reports. Probably you would have heard it throughout the year. This is the uh, kind of penetration we have been seeing. We are seeing uh, from 26 percent of the population. Now it's pretty easy to use a mobile ID device. We are also planning. The UP government is also planning to give an, uh, a tablet to a blind person so that he can enter this data. We are also looking at reducing the transaction. But at the same time, we also have to make it very secure transaction. So these are the uh, only, probably this is the only uh, thing which would limit us to going into full-fledged IT mode. The security of the IT system is the most important thing. This is what he says: our bad neighbor makes us least us with, which is both helpful and good as well. So, like General Kosha mentioned, it's a very situation. You are seeing it. Every single day, you have cyber attacks from China. They just want to show us that your website is banned. As simple as that. It's like giving a mobile. You give your phone, and your child picks up your phone and sends a text to your boss saying something else. So you have a situation as simple as that, and it could be worse also. It's all how you imagine. And this is the thing that cyber security policy says: the cyber space. Is the complex environment consisting of people, software, and it is also organization like government, the financial institutions, 
and your transaction. For example, if you look at IGRS, the Inspector General of uh, Registration and Standard, the property detail is made and there is also an online check with the financial institutions. And the money is transferred to a treasury, which is a different department. Probably you would not actually understand at that point, it is, it is between the departments. The, the departments are responsible to each other. And that's how these data is you know, circulated. And these are the attacks. We probably see that nothing has gone down. It has probably increased, or we are at the same level where we started. It's the same level we started at. 2005, we are at some level. And God for sake, it's, sometimes you believe that anything happening on luck. That's how we believe at the end of the day. Maybe we haven't seen enough attacks to make it very solid. Anybody who is speaking sitting here, you would be actually telling you this only that we have not seen enough attacks. They didn't reach our parameter. Probably would have known SDC tried to reach it. Probably there are many other information sensitive data which is there, which the, the attackers didn't know, and that's why it is surviving actually. It's, that's the case with many of the uh, data which is stored in government or for that matter, many other things. And we will see in this graph that probably the data is not, the attacks are not gone down actually. It has come to the same level which was there in 2005, more or less the same. And these are the risks involved. Lai like was also bringing out some parameters, the rise of uh, social networking. You can suddenly see an, uh, some data going viral. And before the government uh, responds to it, probably you would hear that Musafar Nayak riots happened because of a viral video which was circulated, which was which actually happened somewhere in Pakistan. And probably there was one recent event in Kanpur was that some MLA uh, hooligans beating up this thing. I'm very sure that didn't happen there. But there is nobody to tell you whether it happened there or not. And this is a risk with cloud computing. We talk about that we need our systems to be on cloud computing. Because you are merging multiple data with the same stored data. We think that reducing that uh, enabulation, enability will reduce the cost. But at the same time you are throwing a risk on your data. So this is also something which you have to look at. And you have you just want to uh, hack your accounts, all you have to do is go to Google, put your uh, whatever you need, you need to hack a Google account or something, you will get multiple uh, source codes to do it. I remember recently one of one fellow came to my house, he picked up a cable, I put it in the modem, he actually hacked my uh, BSL modem, which is there in my house. He, all he had needed is a cable, he brought in a cable and he did it right in front of me. He told me I am changing a password for this, that's it. And he did it in red also. Because we do that. When we, I, I know the mistake. After he did it, I knew that we are, I have not changed my uh, modem's default password. And that way I knew that we have not changed the default password. As simple as that. And that is what happens. We keep modem. And it's very easy to hack the modem. You give uh, any system. You say secure net, safe net, everything you bring in. At the end of the day, we are not looking at the, like maybe is an end-to-end system. You made some encrypted data and everything, and your modem is insecure. So, when you are talking about security, you have to talk about end to end. Everything from the end to end means everything your modem, your user device, your data centers, and that is very important. And this is something we have spoken about how do we talk about security? physical security, the personal security, operation security, the communication security, your data security, which how you transmit your data, the carrier which you are not, you will not be very sure whether you are you are using a secure device and there's also a secure device and whether you know that the carrier which is between the both the secure devices is secure or not. That's how it happens in the network security. This is something which is generally known in this room, I think probably from the morning people have been speaking about information security. So how do we go from here? It is important government understands that we have a bigger responsibility for the implementation of the IT rules and the IT laws also. And at the end of the day, the government has to understand how it works in the field. Probably this is the time, probably the government has started realizing in the last four, few years. Maybe in the last four or five years it has been promoting security. And we have, there is a conscious decision in the government to switch over to IP6. And all the websites, probably in a year, of, year from now would be IP6. Uh, 
enabled and it will be a very important milestone in the, uh, to, in the times to come. And it's important how we collect data. And it is also important to tell the people who are using these systems. The, the, uh, for that matter, even the Patwari, and for that matter, even the summary of who registers your document, he has to understand the risk involved. Probably he might not understand, he thinks that everything is good in the back. But he has to understand that his password cannot be, probably that's what was happening for a long time. The SDM would not actually manage the system. He would give his password to someone who would actually log in in his name and do it for him. That's a simple trust which we have. But this could be actually misused also. This is important, we raise our levels to that, the kind of awareness which is required in the system. And also to, you know, uh, uh, build on a secured environment to understand the need. Management is very important. It's also a uh, people issue. The reason being that you can't simply tell them that ye uh, At the end of the day, you, if you don't make them understand this is very important, he is going to tell someone to do it for him. So it is better he does it himself to understand that it's very important. After you have to train someone, you made it sit there. And if he doesn't want to do it himself, so it, that's why I remember this government of Maharashtra went for a BOT model. They know that the risk is involved, probably they borrowed skilled people to do the transaction. The only reason, if you remember that system, the SRO comes there only does put on put on, that biometric system he locks in. And after that, the, the, the job is taken over by someone else. To understand this, that's how you design systems to understand that you can't go beyond certain things. You can't, if you think that Patwari will understand how your ideal systems work, and you can build on a safe system, it's very tough. And that's how they have, you have to understand the need also. And if you completely don't think that mobile device was then if he is not able to use it, and that, that becomes a uh, barrier to yourself. So you have to be very practical in creating systems. So I remember that uh, we went to study this Maharashtra IT system. It was excellent for one reason. You did not have an IT trained service truck. But he understands there is a risk involved. So what he does is that after every transaction, he comes, checks it once, and puts his biometric. As simple as that. So it's very safe. That's why you, the, the design of the system is very important to make it very secure. The data security. And probably today, most of you are, uh, the people who are involved, they would be telling us how we should have a protected data. Probably Anwar spoke about it, uh, the encryption of the data. So the, the, when the data is encrypted, the same code has to be given to the person who tries to change the data also. We call it meta details. We have to understand, we also have to have a track of this meta details, who used the system at that time, so that we can go back and find out what actually went wrong. So the system also have to have a recording of the metadata, the, the, the need, how and when the data was changed. And that also becomes an important part of the system. And the superior, maybe for the IGR system, the, the IG Inspector General Registration should have a dashboard to find out was, was there a malicious use of the metadata from the feedback. So there should be an online query system which would actually understand whether the system was wrongly accessed at a different point of time. These are technologies probably you would have heard many more technologies coming up today, how do we do about it. It's a very simple perspective we give that this is something which we can achieve and we have to keep doing it. It's not that you get better and he gets better than you. So you, it's, an, it's an ongoing process. You have to keep working on and they keep working on you. So it's like, that's, that's why General Kuchar put it very nicely that it's a pretty situation. You get better, he gets better than you and you must get better than you. That's it. And this, the, the threat, the kind of threats you are looking at, you have spyware, hackers, wires, lockups, everything. You can look at every possible uh, which, in a thing you can imagine that is there. It's a threat. And this is a risk. Probably this is a graph I can skip. This is a risk which you have a lot of people. These are the uh, threats to national security which you have picked from the net, uh, as General Kuchar mentioned on. This you can read from the net also. I would probably come with a small uh, example which happened in Uttar Pradesh. We had this, uh, our agency is also the, uh, the nodal agency for procurement, the e-tendering system. I remember this, there was these two brothers who never wanted the tender to go to the other brother. So we uh, got in some uh, cyber uh, fellow and he uploaded a system which would actually crash that entire data. 
So most of the schedule got hacked. So and we had to report anything. This this is what we have seen personally. And this can go anywhere from here. And these are the I have mentioned already mentioned two examples from UP where the data could be a threat to the, uh, the law and order situation. It's not just law and order situation, it can be political also. It can suddenly, you know, that's what we see in movies. Probably we see when we see Hollywood movies and we think that okay, India may see any Osaka because we don't have any adults. But that threat has come closer to us. And uh, thank you for the uh, wonderful opportunity. And let's hear from you soon. <laughs>